Hey, it's Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida. Welcome to the Christmas Room. Sit back, relax. You are about to watch a Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. Making a, a video of the, the top five things I hate or the top five things I love is just standard for the YouTube industry. It brings people in. Uh, the Sony fanboys will be flocking in here to prove me wrong. <laughs> and you're going to see all kinds of wonderful comments on how they don't agree with me. But every camera has its pluses and its minuses. And, uh, you know, especially if you're coming over from another brand, let's say from an Nikon or a Canon or a Panasonic, and you're moving into Sony, obviously you want to know what is the negatives. We got jingles with us today and... I did manage to remember to turn on the light. Now, what I am doing today is I'm shooting at 30p instead of 24p. Now, the higher quality is at 24p. At 30p, you do get a reduction in quality, but I don't really see it. However, what you do get is you get a little bit of a tighter picture. Okay, uh, so some people can live with it and some can't. So I wrote down five things that I hate about the uh, Sony A7 Mark III, or the A73 as I like to call it. It's not really the name, but that's, I kind of gave it a nickname. Uh, so the things that I hate is all on this one sheet. And then uh, as soon as I finish this video, I'm going to make another one immediately. And all I'm going to do is go over there and stop it, and then come back and start it again. I'm not even going to change my shirt. It's just going to make the second video one after the other and you'll see uh, the things that I love the next day. But look at, I got two pages of things that I love. <laughs> All right. So there's not a lot of things that, you know, you're going to hate about this camera, but uh, you know, for the Sony boys that can't stand it when anybody says anything negative about their camera, Sony is terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Who would buy a Sony? So now you can make your comments down below uh, and telling me what a horrible person I am. But for those that are the rest of us, the 98% uh, that really want to know, uh, these are the things that I picked out uh, that is wrong with the Sony uh, or that I really don't like about the Sony A7 uh, Mark III. Um, is there a deal breaker? Just looking at the list, I would say not really. There's a couple that would, could make it a deal breaker. So you do want to hear what they are. I'm just going to go through them real quick. It's not going to be a long video. Uh, the A7 Mark III does not come with an external battery charger like the uh, A9 or the A7R Mark III. This is the A9. Uh, I can't show you the A7 Mark III because it's hiding. No, I'm actually recording with it, so it's on the tripod. And I'm using the 50 millimeter 1.4 lens, the, the one from Sony, the Zeiss. And I think I have it set this time at 1.8. Um, and what else? ISO 800, 1 60th of a second on the shutter because I'm sure, uh, shooting 30p. Uh, and I'm using the standard profile and I have everything set in the standard profile to minus two, minus two, minus two. So contrast, saturation, and uh, what's the other one is down to minus uh, two. And I'm using an external mic. I'm not using the one on board. All right, so what are the things that I hate about this camera? They're, they're minuscule, but they're there, okay. Um, no external battery charger. So with this camera, you've got to plug it into a USB charger, and they do give you one of those, okay? Plugs into the wall, uh, but the battery's got to be in the camera, so you can't be charging another one now while you're doing, uh, working with this one, which I ordered the new Wasabi uh, uh, batteries. They're on their way, so when I get that in, I'll do a video on that too. All right, so that's one of the things I don't like. The body is too small. All right, that's nitpicky, I gotta admit, okay? But uh, the body is a little bit too small, and because the distance between where the lens goes to the camera, uh, on, mounts onto the camera, and the uh, where the sensor actually is, is so close, okay, uh, that what happens is in order to use 
the lenses, there the lens, that same distance is added to the lens. So it actually makes it always almost unbalanced. The camera is just too small for its own britches. You know how they say it's too big for your britches? Well, this camera seems to be too small for its britches. All right, so this is a uh, Panasonic GH4. Yeah, this one's the four, not the five, but they're almost identical. But this one seems to balance it very nicely. You could put very large lenses on here. You could feel them that they're, they're large, but just to put the basic standard high quality 50, 50 millimeter lens onto the um, A7 III, A7R III, or the A9, which this one is, uh, is, uh, it unbalances everything. Now, Sony did come out with this 55 millimeter 1.8 and it goes very nicely. Look, it balances very nicely. Uh, but as a professional out in the field, chances are you're going to want the 1.4, you're going to want the 11 blades instead of less, and so on and so forth. So uh, they're high priced lens, the $1,500 lens, which is the one you're actually looking at right now, is too big for the body. All right. I wish I had the one with the adapter here to show you. Uh, every one of them w uh, will add extra space. So that space that you're missing because the camera is made small on purpose is added to every single lens. So uh, that I will not. I will classify that as a negative. You know. So the body's too small. Uh, the tap and track. It's not the best implementation. Implement, implementation, okay? It's a sloppy design. I'm very glad it's there. Yes, I'm happy that I discovered and found the tap and track. You can tap and track just like you can on the Canons, on the Panasonics, um, but it's done in a sloppy way. I don't know what it takes to clean that up, but it makes it so that it's not the tap and track operation. Not the actual tapping and uh, not the actual of the camera tra uh, tracking it uh, is is not quite up to snuff. Okay, so that's the third thing. I think I went over five on these. All right, the next thing that I dislike. This is something you have to live with every day. All right, the file numbers that the camera assigns to each file. Believe it or not, uh, when I put a, a card into the camera, I automatically format. This way I know I'm working with a fresh card. Now you might not have that process or habit because maybe you don't come from a professional background or you just do uh, a different thing. But most professionals that I knew, you know, you put a card in there and it's a fresh card, bam, you format it instantly. It's just a habit from 15 years ago that since, since digital has come. So um, not only are they, do they always start over at C0001, uh, it won't even name the card Sony, where the, camera, the uh, Canon will say EOS. Uh, the, uh, oh, that's not the Panasonic. The Panasonic will say Lumix or something that you'll know that it's a Panasonic. This one just says private. It labels every card that you have as private. Then it buries the video clip files in private M root clip. So you got to go through those folders before you can even find your video uh, clips. Now, some things like my Final Cut Pro automatically will pop it up. You want to download it, so problem solved. But just so you know, uh, you know, that that's where the files are if you're going to go pull them out manually, but it coming back to zero C0001 every time and there's no way out. I have not found a way out. You put the card in, you format, you're starting at 0001 and that includes the A7R3 and the A9. So it's not unique to the A7 Mark III. Okay. The mic plug, where you plug in an external mic, uh, is too close to where the strap uh, connects to the camera. Now on the A9, it's not even in the same column, but every time I put this uh, camera on the tripod and I want to plug in my mic so you can hear me, okay, that allows me to walk around and with the face detection, you can hear me no matter where I go. But these little dangly clips that are over here, all right, they're metal and they're grounded to the body um, and it's always in the way plugging it in. Now, in another video, uh, I think it was the last one, I said that I was very much worried about it shorting out and a couple of people said, oh, that can't happen. Uh, I'm not willing to take the chance, okay? Because what comes with stereos and electronics, when metal hits metal and you're grounded to a metal body, I am worried about 
uh, something, you know, it's my camera, I would have to get it fixed. But put that aside now, whether you agree with me or you don't, that's okay, that's up to you. What I'm not going to bend on at all is that every time I go to plug it in, I have to lift the clip up to plug it in and that's annoying, okay? Very annoying. And that's an every day, every time thing. It's not like, oh, you can live with it, you know, that type of thing. All right, so here's the next one. The 30p video mode. I already mentioned this, okay? The 30p video mode crops the image, in my opinion, too much. The A9 does the same thing. 24p, you get full frame. And that's one of the main reasons I went to Sony. I wanted the full frame because I want my background blurred out so it looks very portrait-ish or movie-ish when I make a movie. Uh, but when you go to 30p, it crops. So how much does it crop? All right, let's do this. How about if I stop it and, and switch it to 24p? Because you're watching 30p now. So I'm just going to do a quick slice, a, a, a quick uh, edit right here, okay? I'm going to change it from the 30p to the 24p and oh, it feels so much more comfortable. Then I'll have to come back to 30p because the timeline is going to be a 30p timeline. So I'll be right back. Watch, it's going to switch over, okay? Look at the background. Look at the background, okay? Okay, so now that is now running at 24p. Now it's incorrect for me to put a 24p clip on the 30p timeline, but just look at the spacing between how much you have of the Santa Claus and how much you have of the grandfather's clock compared to when I go to the 30p. Now I'm using the 50 millimeter lens, not the 55. That's the one that I bought because it helps me to have a little more space. All right, let me stop it here and go back to 30p or the rest of the video is going to look ugh, and we don't want that. Okay, that is, we're back in 30p and I'm back at the shutter speed of 1 60th of a second. So that's the difference. If that doesn't bother you, then it's no big deal. Uh, it's a, you know, it's one of the things that I would like a little more room. The camera's up against the wall. The Christmas tree or my background on this side is up against that wall. And even if I move from this room, there's always going to be a background that's going to be up against the wall. So it's a spacing issue. If the spacing issue doesn't bother you, then you don't have to worry about that because the camera is a wonderful camera. So this 30p uh, incident happens on the A9 and the A7 Mark III, but does not happen on the A7R Mark III. So if that bothers you, uh, the A7R Mark III prices are coming down, 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 where you, for $800 more, you should be able to get an A7R Mark III, okay? So if it doesn't bother you, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right, one of the top ones that everybody could say together, no articulating screen, already? All right, all together, one, two, three. No articulating screen. No articulating screen. There's nobody on this side. So that, that is beyond me. So what's interesting is anybody got a lot of money? The way this screen opens, okay, of course there's always that one guy out there that I don't need an articulating screen. All I need is the up and the down. Well, you might not be a little bit overweight and you might not want to go to the ground and you might not want to switch the camera to portrait to take pictures and then the, the screen doesn't help you. It needs to flip up so that I can see. You want proof? Look, um, this camera, which is the Panasonic, I can flip it out, okay? So I can go down to the ground. Now you can do that with the Sony, right? But, oh, wait a minute. I want the portrait mode. I want a tall, oh, but I can't turn it on the Sony, but I can here, okay? So no articulating screen, bow, okay? Five things I hate about the A7 Mark III. I can't even say it with a straight face because it's probably going to be the camera of the year. This camera is amazing, especially at the price point. No, it doesn't have everything that we want in there, but it hits so many of the checkboxes. Uh, and here's another one uh, that you can't fix, not inside of the Sony line, okay? Face detection, which is what I've got going on now. It follows me everywhere I go. Uh, if, I, if it loses my face, it's going to follow the uh, item that's in motion. Hey, Jingles, how you doing, baby? Uh, as soon as I turn towards the camera, it's following and it's working face detection again. Uh, now I'm at 30p, so I'm at the edge. I should have lost fake focus. 
I don't know if it will or not, but it'll get me back here. And then I'll come back here. And this is what face detection is about. Okay, it will follow a face. So if you've got any kind of an event uh, where you've got somebody or some group of people that you need to follow, face detection is awesome, right? And it works pretty well, uh, but it does not work. <laughs> if you go uh, to um, use the Wi-Fi, face detection doesn't work. All you'll have is motion detection. All right, and it, what else? What other reason will it not uh, work? Uh, so using the Wi-Fi, all right. So that would mean that I would want to turn the the phone on. Where the heck is my phone? So if I wanted to turn the camera on and off on the phone, uh, and just so you know, even when the app is working, you can't tap for focus. But you can turn the camera on and off from your phone. You can change the shutter speed. You can change the f-stop. And I believe you can change the white balance. I'm not sure, but I think so. But I can't connect. I have Wi-Fi turned off. Because if I turn the Wi-Fi on, I lose the face detection. And if I go, okay, I'm going to beat this. I'm going to get one of those um, uh, uh, monitors that you plug in the HDMI and just mount it right on the hot shoe. No, no, no. If you use uh, anything <laughs> with the camera, it turns face detection off. You can't put any kind of a strain on it at all. Uh, so no face detection if you use Wi-Fi or if you use the HDMI port. So your HDMI port is out. You can't put a monitor on it. You cannot put a monitor on it. All right. And you can't use Wi-Fi uh, in order to uh, use the app. So let's see what else is that I hate about this. We're out. I don't have anything else that I hate about it. Okay, there's some things that are not convenient uh, that we could talk about. I don't think these are deal breakers because if you know that you need something, you're going to know about these cameras already. It's not going to be new and it's not going to be, oh, I didn't know that. But uh, you can't get 60p 4K. You can on the Canon. Uh, the One DX Mark II, but that's a forty—I mean, five thousand dollar camera. Uh, you can on the GH5, uh, but you cannot on any of the Sony's uh, uh, cameras. Uh, you cannot do sixty frames per second uh, in 4K. Um, so that is a negative. Uh, another negative that I don't think it'll bother very many people, but it could, is that you got two card slots, but only one of them will use the newer high-speed one. And that's where you have to use, uh, this is what you have to use to shoot in 100 megabits per second. If you drop down to the lower 60 megabits per second on the A9, on the A7R3, or on the A7 III, uh, you have to use the faster card slot. All right. So that's I'm, I'm not listing that as one of the things that I hate, but I'm just making you aware of it. So that's, that's uh, some of the negative things on the camera. Um, the lenses are large. They're expensive. Uh, you get, uh, but you got uh, Sigma coming into the uh, rescue. Uh, they're making a lot of the good Sigma lenses, the art lenses, going to be available right smack on the Sony with no uh, adapter or anything. Tamron is doing that also, and uh, Tokina is doing that. Um, and they're all supposed to be autofocusing. Now, we haven't qualified if the autofocusing is going to work as well as the native lens, which is why I bought this lens. I bid it on this lens. It's the 50mm 1.4 Zeiss. Uh, I'll put it in the link below so you can go and see the comments, that what the people have to say about this lens. And there's always going to be yin and yang. Yeah, I love it. It focuses fast. Oh, I don't like it. It doesn't focus too fast. You're going to see that in the comments. It's funny. I know. It's amazing. And, and I'll, I'll explain that face detection doesn't work. Uh, you know, if you use the HDMI port, right, you plug in something in HDMI, face detection shuts down, all right? Someone will make in the comments, oh, well, all you have to do is plug in uh, an external monitor and you can watch it if you can't get Wi-Fi. Duh, watch the video, all right? So that's it, I can't think of anything else. So it's like, such a good camera. I mean, it fits the right thing at the right price. Is it the best possible camera you can get? No, but it's so close. 
It really is. All right, that's enough for this video, okay? I want to get to my next two pages, which is the five things I love about the A7 Mark III, and you can tell I think I went over five. Yes, a little bit. That's right, stick with me. All right, let's end this video, and I'm going to turn it back on and do the next one, and you'll see it tomorrow if you're watching this one, or it'll be the next video after this one. All right, Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida. Catch you later. Bye-bye. You have just watched another Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. Thank you for watching. Description of all equipment used in this video plus any notes Peter took while filming are always placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on mobile apps. Duly noted.